Hey friend, welcome. I'm so excited to have you here listening to another episode of the Pattern Design Circle podcast. Here we talk all about the ins and outs of designing knit and crochet patterns and running a business that makes it all possible. I'm Jessica, your host, knitting pattern designer, design mentor, and the friend in your ear. Can't wait to dive right in. The Pattern Design Circle podcast is sponsored by the Pattern Design Circle, a membership community for knit and crochet pattern designers that are feeling lost, lonely, or frustrated in their business. It connects you with a supportive community that's always eager to answer your questions and help you through the hard times. And there's loads of resources and activities specifically catered to business and designing. Sound like your jam? Check it out at snickerdoodlenits.com forward slash design dash circle. That's snickerdoodle, like the cookie, knits, K-N-I-T-S dot com forward slash design dash circle. All right, let's get into it. Hello, and welcome back for another episode of the Pattern Design Circle podcast. So excited that you're here and I get a chat in your ear. This episode is another featured designer episode. Um, If you haven't watched them already, we had an episode talking about myself as a designer. Um, We talked with Hannah Thiessen of Hannah Bell Knits, and we talked with Cam of Pin Knit by Cam. This episode, we are talking to Emma of Bloom and Create, and I'm so excited. If you don't already know Emma, um, she is the sweetest and In this episode, we talk about uh, her background with creativity and how she got into designing, how she she started to find what she really loved or what exactly it is that she loved and loves. (laughs) And then also um, a little bit about her background as a therapist because her her quote unquote day job is as a therapist. And um, so we talked about that, too. So I hope you absolutely enjoy getting to know Emma and getting a little bit of a deep dive into the behind the scenes of her process and her life as a designer. So hope you absolutely enjoy. Hello and welcome. This is our chat for March's featured designer and I'm going to have Emma from Bloom and Create here. So super excited to have you joining and here's emma so we'll get her on let's see here i think i accept it <laughs> that always takes a little bit there we go hi hello. hello how are you today i'm doing well i'm doing well it's like a beautiful day out I just went for a walk and like I think it's like 60 degrees here and so it's really really nice I feel like it's like very springy and summery finally so yes yeah perfect yeah we had several days and you probably did too because you're not that far I'm in Charlotte North Carolina oh yeah I mean Um, you're probably a little bit warmer than I am but kind of the same wavelengths I'd imagine yeah because it seemed like we had several really great days last week and now it's been bright and sunny it's been a nice a nice shift for sure Yes, absolutely. I'm so excited to have you joining us and for everybody hopping on, welcome. Uh, Feel free to, you know, interact with us in the comments. It's always a lot of fun, I think, to to chat with folks while we're also chatting. (laughs) Um, So to start with, we can do some introductions. If you don't know who I am, I am Jessica, the new pattern designer behind Snicker Dual Knits and the facilitator behind the Design Circle, uh, which is a community for knit and crochet pattern designers, which actually the doors are open right now. So if you're a pattern designer and interested in with other pattern designers, um, check it out. But with me, I have Emma, our featured designer for March. Emma is just a sweet soul. Um, if you're not following her already, definitely give her a follow because I absolutely love what you create Emma like like when I think of like how I always thought I wanted my brand to look like and like the kind of content I wanted to share it would be like your work I finally realized like that's not actually who I am so it just doesn't work Mm -hmm. but I love what you do and I'm glad that you know we're all different we don't all have to look the same but I'm I'm excited to share you here share your work here um is there anything else you would share just as a little intro to yourself Sure. Um, so I am a knitwear designer. I, I mostly will design socks right now and, and like accessories, but I'm 
kind of branching out into some more um, garment design right now, which is really fun. Um, in addition to being a knitter and, and kind of really passionate about creative arts and those sorts of things, um, I work as a therapist in my day job. And so I do a lot of, like I find knitting and, and my, my work in the mental health field really interacting quite a bit. Um, and so those, those two pieces are a big part of what I do in my day to day. So, yeah. Yes. And actually I was going to ask you about how those, you know, correspond later, but let's go ahead and talk about it now because it really does, it, it really shows through in the content that you share with Bloom and Create. You're not just a designer, not that anybody is ever just a designer. <laughs> um, obviously we all have personalities and lives beyond it, um, but your work really shows more about who you are and kind of your day job work that you do. So how, how does that all interact and how do you, you know, like how do explain to us maybe a little bit about what you do and then how you bring that into Blue and Create. <laughs> Definitely. I'd be happy to. Um, so in my, in my day to day work, I, I work mostly with um, like adolescents um, and some some young folks who are kind of just entering adulthood and just kind of figuring out what's going on. Um, and I do I provide therapy for them. And so I, I practice something called DBT, which we don't need to get into all of those those funky things right now. Um, a lot of it, though, is skills based and based around giving people options and like things that they can do when they are feeling those those low points in their life um and i i'm like a fur i get like a little iffy when people say like knitting is my therapy because as a therapist maybe i'm a little bit uh like self i'm like no that's not <laughs> right i think knitting is so therapeutic and i think one it's like being able to love and be so passionate about something where you will just like think about it all the time is such a like a protective factor for folks. It just brings a lot of joy and a lot of happiness and I love that about it. Um, and then there's also something really soothing and mindful about the act of knitting and mm -hmm. how different projects or different kind of like threads of knitting can bring about different feelings and emotions um, and soothe us in different ways or challenge us in different ways. And I, I love that aspect of knitting and crocheting and, and all the different fiber arts that we have. So, yeah. Yeah. And so then on like on your Instagram account, you share a lot of stuff that's very much like, um, I mean, obviously it's not therapy, but it's very encouraging and like speaks to what mental health actually looks like um, a lot of what we see on social media not as much anymore but we still see a lot of what you know folks often call the highlight reel or mm -hmm. you know the perfect part of folks's lives yeah. and just the reminder that you know everybody struggles with different things at different times and your your account is or your brand in general is just like this like sunshine that like also is like hey we're living real life <laughs> it's okay to be a real person <laughs> thank you I'm really I, I feel really like affirmed when people share that like that's the kind of energy they get from my account mm -hmm. um and like it's it's been a lot of fun having the account develop in the way that it has um and just kind of like enjoying that process and like enjoying the different places it takes me has been a lot of fun so yeah yeah another thing I maybe I'll, I'll touch on about the knitting being therapy kind of thing from my perspective also I want to say it's okay if you don't have the perspective where you feel like knitting is your therapy um because for me it's like okay yes I I enjoy the you know just the movements especially I, I usually don't love just playing garter or stock in it but sometimes that's that's what I need to help my mental health um and I, I recognize that but I've also often felt like guilt around the fact that I don't feel like my knitting is important enough to me or something like like I don't have like 
oh, this is like what has saved my life. Mm -hmm. um, and so I want to say it's okay if, if you're also in that boat. Um, yeah. And I think it's like rarely ever one thing that saves our life or like changes how we feel, right? It's so many different categories and like it doesn't always serve the purpose of being super soothing. Like maybe that's not what it is for you. Maybe it's that challenge or that excitement or that pride or it's just something you like to do. You know, there's there's lots of reasons why I mean it. But yeah. I appreciate you highlighting, you know, just because it's one thing to me doesn't mean it's going to be the same thing to you or to anybody else, really. Yes, yes. And so, like, I often describe it as, like, I feel like I'm a designer before I'm a knitter because mm -hmm. the reason I really started knitting all of the time was because of my obsession with designing. <laughs> and so it is a lot of the creative aspect, the problem solving, mm -hmm. different things like that. But then it also has become a lot of... The community for me so it's I, yeah I love making things I love wearing the things that I make but more than that it's it's about these other things that it has been connected me to <laughs> mm -hmm. um all right so then let's go oh first of all I mean first of all being 10 minutes in <laughs> I wanted to say happy birthday month because oh, thank you. um if you're not familiar with Emma always does a birthday sweater for her birthday um which I think is so fun and also we share a birthday month and if I remember right we were born in the same year so we're like just a few days apart oh 96 yep yep <laughs> just revealed our ages but yes. <laughs> cool stuff so what your, day okay. mine's March 27th when and mine's yours? the 20th why? Wow, that is so freaky. Wow. Yeah. Cool. So happy birthday in yeah. a few weeks. <laughs> I've already started getting birthday emails, and I'm like, oh, I guess it is March now, but it still is a bit early. I'm like, I thought we had some time. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, anyway, so um, for folks that don't know about your birthday sweater, definitely recommend they go check it out. Do you have it with you by chance? Sure. I'm like actually actively knitting on it right now. So yeah. this is my birthday sweater so far. Essentially, it's a sweater that I knit um, in anticipation for my birthday. And then I wear it for the first time on my birthday, um, like kind of as a way to celebrate it. And like, there's something special about like that first day wearing a sweater. And so I was like, that's the gift I'm going to give myself for my birthday. So this is it so far. Um, yes. It's rolling up. It's quite cropped. It's supposed to be like eight inches under the arm. So I have about an inch and a half to go. Um, and then I have to pick up, it's like a V-neck sweater. It's the Daily Pullover by Paula Pivera is what I'm knitting. So, okay. yeah. Looks so cozy. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So then uh, also part of like the intro, even though we've definitely been <laughs> I think because I can't just follow my questions, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask, what are three of your favorite things in life in general? It doesn't have to be your three favorite, but like three things that come to mind and at least one of them has to be not yarny. Okay, gotcha. So three of my favorite things just in life in general. Yeah. Um, Gosh, okay. Um, I guess I will start out by saying um, I love, I mean, I love the color mauve, which I think yes. is all, you know, I, I'm very in love with the things that I love. I very much share that I love them. So I love <laughs> the color mauve. I love the shades of pink. I love the idea of like being feminine and, and owning that femininity and, and not viewing it as a, a weakness. And like that mm -hmm. is... Um, a huge privilege of mine that I am a cis woman and like that is something that I have found a lot of connection with um and I also just like love the visual appeal of mauve um so mauve yarn mauve clothes like mauve home items you know like I I rent my apartment but if I or when I or if you know I own a home like I'm gonna paint everything mauve like <laughs> it's just gonna happen um so I love that and I think I really, right now, really interested in watching gymnastics. I really love watching um, these amazing athletes do, f like, things that just don't make sense to me. <laughs> um, and I, I think it's really entertaining, and there's a lot of, like, just cool stuff to hear about that. Um, and then I think, 
I, gosh, I really feel very grateful and love my family. Um, yeah. And I feel like so lucky that my family won at this time. We all, most of us live pretty close together um, and that I have positive relationships with them and feel like I can go to them if I need things. Mm -hmm. So like my parents um, live pretty close by, my sister, my brother-in-law, my niece also live pretty close by, my brother, my little brother's down in Atlanta, so he's a little farther away, but when he comes back, it's really nice, so. Yeah. yeah, that's nice. Thanks for sharing. I so I what I was like typing up just some things that I thought we could chat about. Yeah, and I came up and I was like, I could give her a, a warning about this, but maybe it'll be fun to see what she comes up with on this side because I haven't asked any of the other designers that. But I think it's it, fun know. to just like bring in different elements that are not knitting and designing because mm -hmm. we're not. I mean, yeah, we're knitters and we're designers, but there's a whole lot more too. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so then actually going into knitting and design. <laughs> cool. How did you get? How did you get started knitting? And then how did you get started designing? Yeah, um, knitting. I learned how to knit. My mom taught me how to knit when I was like seven or eight. Um, I knit a garter stitch scarf <laughs> that took me like many years to knit. <laughs> um, and so I. I enjoyed doing it then and then when I was in college I got into crocheting um mm -hmm. and so I was actually in a sorority in college and during like all our chapter meetings I would always like bring my crocheting um and so I did a lot of crocheting then and I enjoyed that and I crocheted um little penguins like because penguins were my sorority is like mascot <laughs> so I just crocheted a bunch of penguins so um, cute. Then, <laughs> yeah when I got I got back into knitting when I was in grad school though I think one I found like the the designs like the sweater designs that were coming out um in like 2017 2018 like they were just so stunning and like beautiful and like I really wanted to make them and there wasn't the same amount of designs out there for crochet. And so I kind of leaned a little bit more into knitting um, and kind of re-remembered how to do it. Um, YouTube has definitely been a helper. It still helps me now. Like, I forget how to do the make one right versus the make one left, you know, those sorts of things. Um, and so that was kind of how I got into knitting. And I just, like, went full force into it. Um, it was definitely became like a capital K knitter at that point. Um, I started designing about a year and a half after I got back into knitting a lot. <laughs> um, and so I was at the very end of 2019, I think is when I, yeah. Um, I felt like I, I saw a lot of sock designs and I was like, you know, I think I could do this. And I, I, I like the idea of putting together charts and um kind of putting things in, like working out the the puzzle um while also really making it an enjoyable knit at the same time um and so i kind of started there and then kept moving 2020 gave me a lot of time uh, <laughs> to knit so that's kind of where a lot of this stuff bloomed out of i guess yeah um so we'll go into the designing a little bit more but first I'm curious so you you did some knitting and then you didn't do a whole lot and then you did some crocheting have you been interested in like other hobbies and crafts like has that been a big thing or is it mostly just been knit and crochet yeah I mean I wouldn't necessarily say it was like a I guess it would be a hobby but like when I was in high school I was very interested in art um and like did a lot of like mm -hmm. painting and drawing um and still to this day like my you know I write notes for work a lot of the times but there's always like doodles in the margins and like I love kind of putting things together and like kind of sketching it out and being a little bit more on that artsy side um I haven't really tried out too many other crafts for right now I really want to learn how to sew but I'm kind of like Emma you have enough crafts time you have a stash that you have acquired and just work there and so I'm kind of like I'm giving myself a little bit of time before I dive into another thing. 
Yes, there's there's always so many things. I so my mom knew how to sew. My, none of my family that I knew at the time knew how to knit. I've since learned like two years ago that my grandma used to knit a ton when she was like my age. But <laughs> I had no idea growing up. Um, so my mom had taught me to sew. So that was kind of the first thing that I did more of. But um, now it's like I feel like I have so many hobbies and I don't do any of them. I just like think longingly about that so. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um okay so actually diving into your design process mm -hmm. what you love about designing and what you don't love <laughs> yes like what is your favorite part about designing My and what is your least favorite part okay gosh um my favorite part I would say is getting to like marry the idea of making an enjoyable knit with making something that's beautiful. Like mm -hmm. I am a really, like I don't like doing certain things when I knit and I am like pretty like, I just don't want to have to do an all over big cabled <laughs> sweater. Like there's just things that I'm just like, that is too much attention for me right now. They would look stunning, but I, I can't do that. And so wanting to like create something that has a balance between uh, like peaceful knitting and also something that is like it flows and it's visually appealing and, and just like looks beautiful. I don't know. I like the beauty yeah. and just like the, the beauty in what it looks like and then also beauty in the process. Um, I also really love putting together like my pattern PDFs. Like I really like kind of putting the pretty things in there and um, you know, adding little journal prompts and stuff. Like I really enjoy that part of it. Um, uh, so um, a quick question. Do yeah. you like to knit, wear and design the same kind of things or do you have a struggle finding the balance between all of it? Um, yeah, I mean, I design things that I want to wear. Um, and I wear my designs like I brought some over with me and I was like yeah I, I've worn these socks and I, I don't you know I, they're, I'm not precious about it um, and that's I think everyone every designer kind of has a different um, way to approach that stuff but yes yeah. <laughs> my, so I've always struggled with the, the kind of things I like to wear are really simple like a bunch of stockinette um, but I kind of mentioned this earlier, usually I don't love to knit that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, when I'm designing, I usually enjoy the challenge. And so it's like, I love to knit and design kind of more intricate things mm -hmm. that will require more brain space. But what I want to wear is not mm -hmm. the same thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah so sure. maybe I just need to, you know, knit for somebody who is the opposite. And we can just <laughs> change knits. <laughs> Yeah, like a little switcheroo, a little swap happening there, for sure. Yeah, but it's been really interesting. I feel like I'm finally kind of getting into a spot where it's like, okay, I'm designing the things that I really... Like, I, I love all of my designs. Mm -hmm. They all are special to me in some way or another, but yeah. I'm I'm definitely trying to find, all right, this is actually what I want to wear, like, yeah. nonstop. How can I make it so I, I also enjoy the knitting and the designing process? Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> It's, it's uh, fun to find that balance, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to move on to your least favorite part of design. Oh, oh gosh. Um, <laughs> I don't like the technical side of things. Um, I don't, not in that, like, I don't, I don't mind the computers. Like, I don't mind that stuff. I just don't like the like super close to detail um stuff like I, my my lovely tech editor Natasha is like a saint because she has to like comb through all of my typos and I'm like I don't like typo I don't proofread this <laughs> time. so like getting down and like looking at all of those minutia is probably my least favorite part about it that's what I'd say yeah it, I'm I'm thankful we have tech editors. It was like yeah. one I I didn't have my first few patterns tech edited, and then I, I did go back and have them tech edited. But once I started working with a tech editor, I'm like, oh, I can spend 
a whole lot less time reading through and redoing all of my math ten times to make sure it's all right. I'll just send it over to them and they can deal with it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> but that's not my problem anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you got into the design process, once you, you know, you're, you were kind of interested in starting with socks, um, mm -hmm. was there anything that surprised you about it? Was it easier or harder than you expected or hmm. um I think I didn't expect for it to be something that like that would like constantly develop and like kind of grow I think what I mean by that is like when I first like designed my first few designs I was like oh this is a really cool idea I have like I'll just do this one thing and like I was you know in grad school but then the pandemic hit and so like could no longer go to the hospital that I was interning at because they were like we don't want any students and so I had all this time and I was like oh I have this time right now I'll just do it um and so I, I didn't expect for it to be such a big part of my life like two years later mm -hmm. um like I kind of just expected it to just be something I did but like now I'm like oh yeah I've like my plans and hopes for like the next year of designing like sketched out and stuff you know and like I didn't expect for that to happen mm -hmm. um, in such a way but yeah yeah so like how much time either you know hours or percentage of a week are you spending on your your designing because obviously you also are there <laughs> still so. it depends it really depends um I think that, yeah, it's hard to say because a good amount of the time that I spend designing is like spent sample knitting and like making those things happen. Um, so like, I don't know, I usually don't work on like PDFs or patterns unless it's like the weekend because I find that it's hard for me to like switch from working brain to pattern working brain and back and forth so I kind of like if I get into a pattern pdf writing mode I'm like I don't want to go back to my other job like I don't want to do that and so it'll get confusing so on the weekends if I have a pdf that I want to work on I'll work on it for maybe like three or four hours or something along those lines and then during the week um I definitely will be making my um samples and, and working on those kind of in the evenings and things like that and then um with my, my Patreon and stuff like that, I sometimes will do Zooms and stuff um, during the week, depending on, like, what the what's going on. But it ebbs and flows. There's no one answer of how much time, and I don't track my time. Yeah. <laughs> so. Sometimes it's better not to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was going to ask about Patreon later, but let's go ahead and talk about it. Because sure. I just love like different parts you have in the Patreon that are so unique and beautiful. Um, so, so do you want to share about your Patreon, how it started, if, if you want, and then like what you offer in there? Sure. Um, so my Patreon, um, I started it last January, so a year ago, I guess. Um, or no, it's March right now. <laughs> um, you know, a little bit more than a year ago. It kind of and, still feels like January, though. Um, I started because I wanted to have, like, a consistent um, way of, like, having, like, some kind of design income, even if I wasn't going to be working on, like, putting out a design that month. Um, I also started it because, as my job as a therapist, I, like, talk to people and talk to teens, and some of these teens like to look me up. And if they find Boom Great, great cool awesome um i'm really passionate about knitting so passionate that i have done all this and like great um but i wanted to like film podcasts and and kind of share a little bit more about like what's going on in my life but like didn't feel comfortable putting that out there on like the whole wide web of the internet because like you know yeah. We just need some <laughs> boundaries. Um, so having the Patreon was a way that I could kind of communicate with people more directly um, and kind of foster a really, like, a place where we can 
knit without expectation and like we can be encouraged to practice um, self-care in, in whatever way it makes sense for folks. Um, so that's kind of how it started. Um, right now, it, like I have two kind of levels within Patreon. I have one level where there is, we have a Discord um, server. I post um, video podcasts. I have design behind the scenes. Um, I will sometimes post um, like journal prompts. Um, they have a get a coupon code for a free pattern each month. And then that's one tier. And then the second tier I have is all of those benefits. Plus um, once a month they get a handwritten note. Um, with like a sticker or two, depending on, you know, what's happening that month. Um, and like the other thing, like disclaimer right now, I actually have paused Patreon for the month of March um, because my personal life has gotten quite busy in like great positive ways, but also like just kind of taking a step back. So I, people can join right now. Um, it just won't, um, like you won't get perks for this month and you will be charged for this month of March, but you would like join and then be charged in April. Um, basically I like need more time to finish my February perks. And I was like, I need to pause. It's never happened before. I wrote a lovely letter to my dear patrons, like, and they were so supportive and wonderful. And I felt very affirmed by them. Um, so just as a disclaimer, that's also what's happening here. <laughs> yes. And, you know, part of that also is that you, I mean, setting a boundary in general, also the, uh, the stale mail option, you, you also cap. I know that. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. There's no snail mail. I don't think there are any openings right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> cause gosh, my hand would like, <laughs> cause I, I go into like each person's Instagram profile and I like um, talk about what's going on. Like, I want to make it a personalized mm -hmm. thing and not just to like, hey, have a great month, which is awesome, but like I want to make it personalized to that person. Um, so that's takes time to do that, basically. Yes, yes. And that's what that's what I really love. Like just from what you've shared from about Patreon before. It's those those snail mails that are just like it's just like so sweet and like I can just imagine receiving it in the mail and like what what sunshine it would be <laughs> um, and then also you know everything you create you definitely have a touch of beauty to it so like your stickers and everything that you do they're always so beautiful <laughs> yeah. it's been really it's fun to be able to like support other like small businesses by choosing the stickers and like mm -hmm. getting this like I mean, it's wonderful for my stationary loves because I get to like buy stationary every month. I'm like, I need it. And yeah. it's cute. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's a nice, it's a win win in a lot of ways. Yeah. And so I just, I don't know. I love just in general that like personal touch, just the fact that you're doing something unique in your Patreon, um, even if it's not everybody receiving it. Um, so I actually had started a Patreon. Uh, a year and a half ago or something um but I still I was still like wasn't really sure what I was really passionate about or even who I was as a person and so it was like I had like the behind the scenes and I had you know different things like that that I offered but it wasn't like it was anything really special or unique and it was something that I actually wasn't super passionate about running so I didn't talk about it a lot and it has di since dissipated <laughs> which is fine by me because it just wasn't a good fit but now I just like I really enjoy looking at different ways folks have set up patreons and stuff that make it unique and very personalized to like you as the creator and then yeah I just I just love it that's all <laughs> thank you thank you it's um it's a lot of fun it's really feel really special that I get to put that together and people are supportive of it. Yeah. Do you also do, you might've already mentioned this, but do you do journal prompts inside of the page? Um, yeah. So I used to do them every week. Um, right now it's around like every month is how often I'm doing them. Um, so yeah. Yeah. I, I remember, I don't know. I'm pretty sure I'm still on your email list, but, uh, I remember getting an email about it, like, at some point about your journal prompts and everything. It's like, oh, just another sweet touch. I'm a touch. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so getting back to your designs, unless there's anything else you want to share about Patreon first. Um, okay. What, I, you've, 
you've pretty well touched this already, but how would you describe your designs and what makes them unique or like stand out? Hmm. Um, I would say there's a lot of, like I, I like the idea of taking color work and making it flow in the design. Um, and so it doesn't just, you know, a lot of them, I do have a couple that are kind of like a band around the cuff, but it's like doing things to make it integrated with the rest of the design, whether that's like changing how the rib is, changing it into a fade, kind of doing things of that nature. Um, and, and I think I also really pride myself in making things that are enjoyable to knit, um, mm -hmm. and like making things that people want to kind of grab and, and lean towards and, um, everyone wants to do different things, right? And and so I, it's not gonna be what everybody wants to do, but I think that I design definitely for somebody who has a lot going on in their life and maybe they're engaged in multiple things and they want to come home to a project that's going to be a little bit interesting and like something that's gonna require some kind of concentration and stuff and also isn't too overly challenging that it's just gonna create frustration. So, yeah, mm -hmm. like the word that comes to mind is like soothing, like your knits look very soothing to work through. And you kept mentioning this earlier, but you make them beautiful. Like, <laughs> like it's like this piece of art, but it's also like, it's, it's not complicated. It's mm -hmm. not like you have to be the best knitter in the world to have something beautiful, but it's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so, well, I guess we've already covered several of these other questions, um, but I guess let's go ahead and go into your designs. Did you bring some designs with you to share? I did. I brought some show and tell. I brought some, like, um, working in progress um, things as well, like designs that I'm currently working yeah, on, but yeah. might be fun. Um, and then I don't know what, like... So when, one of the designs that kind of, I guess, started, I don't know, I think this was like one of the designs that people saw and were really excited about. Um, and it's still one of my best selling patterns are my Mountain Mama socks. Yes. Um, and like, I love how, here, wait, let me do this one. I love how it is like, there's the skyline and then there's the mountains and then it just flows into the green and it's not like, I like the flow of it. Yeah. Um, so, and then that one kind of led into this one, which is my comfy cacti socks. Those are so but cute. I like this idea of like kind of having a landscape. I also have one that's like waves of an ocean as well, which I really mm -hmm. enjoy. Um, oh, that's so fun. Comfy Cacti were my, was my first gifted knit and my first colored project. Oh, so exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so I, I really like how both of those turned out. Um, and then I guess I will share my, my nostalgia socks because then I can also share my nostalgia sweater design when I'm working yes. on Yes. So these are my nostalgia socks um, inspired by friendship bracelets. Um, and like the nostalgia of summertime and like summer camp and kind of just doing those sorts of things. Um, and so the socks did pretty well. And I also just really love how they look and I love how they just kind of get you to keep knitting the next row and the next row. Um, and so I'm working on a sweater design with it. Um, and I separated for the sleeves a couple of nights ago. So we are moving forwards. It's a yoke, top down yoke design, all over color work. Um, kind of obsessed with it personally. <laughs> um, very excited. So, yeah, it's. Um, I never thought two years ago that I'd be designing a sweater. And here we are. So, yes. it's been a lot of fun. It's so beautiful. Colleen said, wow. And earlier she had said, love the colors about your socks. Oh, thank you, Colleen. <laughs> thank you. Um, so, yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's so exciting. I so I still actually have only knit finished one sweater for myself. I'm working on a card again. But um 
I've made plans to design my first sweater Yay. to be released in January of next year. So That's exciting. now officially on my plans. And so it will happen. <laughs> it's been an idea I've been, it's been over a year. I had like sent it to a few companies and asked, you know, if they wanted to work together. And I just never heard anything back and turned out okay because I had lots of other stuff come up. <laughs> but now it's, yes, I'm, it's the same thing. I can't believe I'm actually going to do it but I'm very inspired like that's all I'm inspired with designs right now is sweaters so I know. it's exciting like I, I think that there's just so many different things that excite us and like get us mm -hmm. to knit the next thing and like sweaters just have so so much it's, it's such a large canvas that you can do so much more with it um which is really exciting yeah well and for me it's been a lot of realizing what would I actually wear a lot more often <laughs> And it's sweaters and cardigans, things that are just, I love cozy things that I can just pull on really easily that don't take a lot of work. I'm I, like on just day to day. I'm just at home pretty much 24 <laughs> seven. Um, so I pretty much only wear accessories if I'm like hopping on a call or going out somewhere. I'm don't and pretty much all of my designs. All, well, all of my designs are accessories. So mm -hmm shawls and hats and cowls and a pair of socks and some mittens <laughs> they just aren't things that i'm wearing on a daily basis so mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> definitely it's been fun like one of the things that i want to do that i want to knit for myself i want to design a shawl because i haven't designed a shawl yet mm -hmm. i think that'd be fun so yeah. but i was just doing some shawl math i was like how do i make this work <laughs> so hard maybe i'll ask my brother he's a <laughs> electrical engineering person so he does math but anyways um but I want to like knit a shawl to have at like the my office at work because I starting to go back into the office I think it's more regular now who knows um so the office gets very chilly so I'll just have a shawl that like lives there that I can just like wrap myself in and I don't have to worry about like slicking it back and forth um so that's, that's a total aside <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. it. I mean, I know that you can do shawls. You've done sweaters. So, <laughs> I always, I've loved shawls as kind of for me, it's been like the easy canvas. Like it doesn't have to fit. Like, sure, you have an idea of how you want it to fit, but it doesn't have to fit with two inches of positive ease on somebody with this size or something. Um, like, anything like hats or cowls or hats or mittens or socks or sweaters um, and and then it just like it becomes it's like I, I do the big huge shawls those are my favorite I, I want something huge and cozy that's just gonna like cover my whole front side um, and so that it is for me it is like this big huge canvas that I get to play with um, and basically there's there's not as many restraints yeah as far as different repeats and different things like that you can you can play with it a lot I think <laughs> do you have an idea for what you want the shawl to look like not like totally um still trying to figure that out basically um I have some like sketches and ideas and like I think because I do a lot of stranded color work um for shawls it's a little bit different and so I'm like trying to figure out how that would play and like seeing what slip stitching type things I can do and just um I have to spend a little bit more time and swatch a little bit more in order for me to like feel confident in what I'm doing so I'll figure it out though I'm not yeah so I had this idea last year um part of why I don't like it is because it's single ply but the idea is it would be a color work shawl and I decided the best way to do it so it's a three-quarter shape so it's like mm -hmm. three triangles with the yeah triangle at the square cut off at the top um but then so then it would be worked in the round and steeped okay. <laughs> I was really excited about the idea but more recently I'm like maybe this would be a better idea for something like a sweater I don't know how many people are actually going to be excited about <laughs> sticking for a shawl and all these things and you still have all of your everything mm -hmm. inside so anyway I yeah. I feel you on figuring out color work with shawls Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so I don't know maybe it'll be a chance to play a little bit more with texture and like see what um that's like mm -hmm. and there's a lot you can still do with you know like stripes and things with color um, yeah. 
without doing actual color work. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, did you have any other designs with you to show or was that everything? Um, the other ones I had, I brought over these socks, which are my Rumpheus socks, which I really like. They're inspired by the book Miss Rumpheus. Um, and I, I don't know, I, I really enjoy all over color work patterns for socks. I think that they give it like a cozy feel. Um, and also I like how mes memori memorizable this pattern is. It's one mm -hmm. of my one of my favorites. Um, and then I also brought over a new design that I'm writing up the pattern for right now. Um, it's on a block, sock blocker, fun. Mm -hmm. So this is my little bunnies. It doesn't have a name yet, but it's bunnies and there's fun ruffles and- They're cute. You know, I, I one of my patterns that I released in the fall was, um, my barn door socks, which were little chickens. Um, yeah. And those were really fun. And so I was like, I'm going to make bunny socks. <laughs> so I made bunny socks. And I'm thinking, like, maybe around the Eastery springtime, it'll be a good time to release it, um, is what, what I'm thinking as far as that goes. But now, like, I've made the thing, I have to do the technical part of it. I have the charts and I have everything made. I just have to, like, put it all together. So. Yeah, do you want to show us the toe on that? Because I saw just a peek and it looks really cute too. So the toe is yes. the <laughs> same color work. It's actually, there's a little bit of oh, like, okay, cross yeah. color work at the top. So it's just the same one um, done down there. Yeah, I love it. It's so cute. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so real quick, since you were talking about color work, do you have any tips for knitters who are feeling intimidated by working color work or like how to make your color work look better or anything like that that you love? Ooh, good question. Um, cause I know a lot of knitters are intimidated by color work. Yeah. <laughs> and I definitely had some color work meltdowns where like I've made it too tight and then it doesn't go over my foot, which is not a fun experience by any means. Um, I think my biggest thing is that like, the first time you do color work to not expect for it to work out perfectly and like to either do color work on something where like the size and gauge doesn't super matter um like a lot of people like color work socks and obviously i love color work socks <laughs> but maybe doing like a color work hat first where mm -hmm. if it happens to be a little bit tighter than you expected it won't be as big of a deal versus if you're knitting with a pair of socks and the cuff is too tight you're not going to get it across the heel um so starting with like a little bit of a lower stakes project with less like less long floats so basically a pattern where the colors are very close together like the mountain mama socks i don't recommend this as a beginner color pattern because this is like a really long float so you have to do some catching which is why there's a little bit of like other colors popping through there versus something like this it's like every three rows, every three stitches, there's a different one. Um, and then I like to do the, like you knit along, and then if you have to do the next color, I will like pull apart my stitches on my needle and kind of just like go like that, and then then pull it over. So basically kind of like making it as though it would be stretched, and then kind of moving my float um, are my, my top tips when it comes to color work. <laughs> Yes, I love it. Um, and I wasn't intending to promote this, but <laughs> <laughs> it does look a nice, but very friendly did, one. Yeah, that's I, that's what I shared it as when I designed it because there's only you know every it's like eight rows or something that you're actually working both colors at the same time. Most of the time, you're just using one color at a time, but then it's it's like an introduction. Mm -hmm. And it's only the longest span is three stitches, um, and I always have video tutorials and stuff like that to teach you how to catch your floats and things. Um, of course, you don't have to work this pattern, but this gives you an idea of, you know, a cowl is something that doesn't have to fit perfectly, um, yeah. especially if you choose to knit a larger size, because it's most often if you're working color work, 
you're likely to go smaller <laughs> rather than larger. And it's because of those floats behind your work that start pulling it together. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Another recommendation I have heard, and I've never done it myself, um, but is to flip your work inside out. So then your floats are on the outside of your work instead of the inside. And so that yeah. just helps carry it longer. Yeah, no, definitely. That's actually in the pattern for this one. I have like some photos of that. And so kind of, doing it from the other side and you also get to see your fun floats from the other side of things <laughs> so. yeah um and it's one of those things like blocking will help a little bit but blocking doesn't help as much with color work as it does with things like lace because <laughs> your your floats do you know it does make yeah your floats are only so long <laughs> and you know I had a tester one time tell me that like they ended up cutting one of their floats and like tying like knots and felting it together and they were like it works I'm happy with it and I was like I'm glad that's <laughs> great that's great I would not do that but I'm really happy for you <laughs> so there's lots of ways knitters find solutions but yeah or mm -hmm. even like some people I know just for like this part of the sock went up a needle needle size yes. so like I use 2.25 millimeter needles. Maybe they go to a 2.75 just for the color portion um, to kind of help loosen things up a bit. Yes. <laughs> and also, you know, just being mindful of it helps too. You know, like you've mentioned, stretching the stitches out and things like that will, will help it as well. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. <clears throat> um, Okay, so the last thing I had on here was just, I had sent you some questions beforehand, and you already talked about gymnastics being something <laughs> that you love. Another thing you mentioned as, I can't remember what the question was, it might have been like a favorite hobby outside of knitting, and what you mentioned was coffee shop touring. <laughs> so I just, I wanted to share that because I loved it, you know, it's just another one of those things that like, just yeah. makes a relatable person so I'm not a coffee person okay um a lot of days I wish I was for the sake of energy <laughs> but um if, if I drink coffee it has to have enough sugar and chocolate that I don't taste the coffee <laughs> mm -hmm. but um for the folks who do like coffee because I feel like there are more folks who like coffee than those that don't what's your favorite kind of coffee Ooh. um if I'm going to, like, a coffee shop, I like to get, like, a cappuccino. If I'm going to a coffee shop, that's what I usually will end up getting. Um, and then when I'm at home, I just like to have, like, drip coffee, um, like, plain old, plain old. Um, but I like coffee shop vibes, like, even more than I like the actual coffee. Like, I think that was one of the things that I missed the most during the pandemic was, like, not being able to go sit in a coffee shop and, like, do work from there. Um, so... Yeah, I just like coffee shop vibes. It's a nice place, nice thing to do. Yes. So do you have, like, either a local place that is your favorite coffee shop or, like, if you've been traveling and you have found a shop that you absolutely love? <laughs> yeah, when I say coffee shop touring, I just mean, like, coffee shop touring. Like, living in D.C., there's lots of coffee shops. So yeah. So I can kind of try out different ones. Um, close to me, one of my favorites is this place called The Little Red Box. Um I also just, like, love their cups have, like, little foxes on them, like, a bunch of them. So cute. Um, so I love I love going there. They have a lot of good coffee. And then there's also a bakery really close by to me called Bread First, which I really like. Um, so those are kind of my, my two favorites right now. But I've been venturing out a little bit more here and there. Um, but, yeah. yeah. So fun. Um, so are you, like, like, do you have coffee every day at home? Or, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, this is my cup from this morning. Um, oh, it's so cute. It's, I know, it's so cute. My partner got it for me. I'm really, I'm a big fan of it. Um, but, yeah, coffee every morning. If I don't have coffee, I get, a, like, a caffeine withdrawal headache. Like, I've just accepted it at this point in my life. So, yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, so much fun. Thank you, Emma, for joining us, for ta talking all things knitting and designing and just your personal life. Um, is there anything else you would like to share about your designs or any advice you have for anybody wanting to try designing? 
Well, one, thank you for having me. I, I really enjoyed chatting. I enjoyed talking about knitting. I could talk about knitting and things like that for, like, forever. So that's always yeah. fun. <laughs> um, and as far as, like, people who want to get into designing, I think to just go for it um, and to, like, recognize that, like, it isn't always personal how people respond to your designs. It, like, it isn't personal. It's, like, there's just different people have different preferences and there's so many things that go into why someone will want to buy something and why they won't want to buy something. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't want to be like, have fun with it, but like, um, if knitting is something that you really enjoy doing, um, remembering that part of it, even when you're trying to like design and things like that, like remembering what parts of it you have enjoyed and how can you incorporate that more as you design and continue to do that part of things. Yeah, I love that. And I will also add, um, I've heard a lot of people who are knitters, they're like, oh, I've been knitting for several years. I feel like I should start designing. Um, I, I do want to give you permission. You don't have to be a designer. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I kind of, it, it makes me feel maybe a little bit sad when I hear that because it's just like you feel like you're I hate shoulds and have tos and things like that like it's it's a hundred percent a-okay and amazing to just enjoy your knitting for the sake of knitting designing is yeah you knit while you design but it's also a completely different thing so yeah yeah and like <laughs> yeah. I I I really love knitting other people's designs and like knitting other people's stuff. And because I have all these designs that I want to knit, like I don't get to knit as much as other people. And like, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying like, it's yes. fun to knit other people's designs. It's fun to kind of be on autopilot and learn from somebody else. Um, and knitting doesn't have to be like your entire personality. Like there's lots of parts to us. So yeah. Yes. I have, no idea how many times I've like I start looking for patterns and I'm like I just need to stop designing so I can knit all of the things I want to knit <laughs> obviously I love designing but um yes, yes. there's lots uh, lots and lots of projects out there so many <laughs> patterns mm -hmm. um oh and the other thing I had in mind when you mentioned you know like there's a lot of reasons people might say different things about your design or your pattern or interpret it in different ways also like if you're going into designing remember that when you go into testing in particular <laughs> um, because sometimes you can get some very different perspectives on how a pattern should be written and it's not that any of them is right or wrong it's completely personal opinion of how people like to read their patterns <laughs> so. yeah, definitely definitely you're never gonna like design the perfect pattern for everybody because yeah. what's perfect for me is going to be perfect for different people. Yeah. Yeah. And that's also the beautiful thing about um, humanity in general, but also the diversity of the knitting community is there are so many different ways to approach different things and, you know, different personalities and everybody is different. So if, if somebody doesn't work for you, that's okay. There's lots more out there. <laughs> Valerie has lots of patterns to choose from. There's many. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, well, if folks want to find you online, where's the best place to find you? Um, I would say starting with Instagram. So bloom at bloom.create is my Instagram. Um, and then my website is bloomcreatedesigns.com, and that has links as well to you know, Patreon, Ravelry, all those things. Um, but the link in my bio has, it's to the website. It's just a link in bio page on the website. Um, so it's, that's kind of where I would start. Yeah. Yes. And of course, when they visit your Instagram page, I'm sure they will start scrolling because you have a <laughs> feed. So don't forget to give Emma a follow as well. Thank you. And if any of my followers are kind of watching here, Jessica does a lot of really, um, cool and innovative work about supporting designers and seeing each other and like um meeting designers needs um and supporting one another so go check out jessica's page uh if you're if you're interested uh thank you yeah i really i realized last year that more than helping and 
I don't know how to say this in a way that sounds right, but more than helping knitters, I really love helping designers and connecting with designers and giving them what they need. But um, so I actually recently started a new Instagram account oh, cool. if, for folks who are designers looking for just designing and business and marketing tips and encouragement and things like that. So that's pattern design circles, the name of that. Um, and in the replay, I'll have all of the, the links to everything we chat about and everything like Perfect. that. So, um, but thank you again so much for joining me and I hope everybody, thanks everybody for joining live, first of all. Um, but I hope everybody has a beautiful rest of their day. Yes, definitely. Take care. Uh, Thanks so right. much, Jessica. Yes, I'll talk to you later. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. If you found it valuable, please share the podcast with a designer friend. And if you have a minute, leave a review. It's so helpful for me and means the world to me. Chat soon.